Hello, pumpkins. So I understand that Toddy Westbrook has made some comments about tarot readers and psychics and mediums. They are not all the same thing. I would like to talk about my views on the subject. So when I said last night, I have views on this. I am upset right now. I need 12 hours to process this. People were like, well, what's the process? Just don't make videos better. And that's not what I said. I jumped to conclusions out of emotions last week and that blew up in my face. So I decided to take time to think about it. And instead I ended up getting pulled into discussions, which you know was my choice, but I should have thought about that more. And I needed time to process. So I took the night to process and now I have my thoughts together. To be clear, 100% clear, I do not plan on making future videos about Toddy Westbrook and tarot. So this is not a reading. I am talking about uh, my views on how things went down and my opinions of what was said and how that could have some long-term implications for precedent going forward that is concerning to me. I respect that Tati Westbrook does not want tarot videos made about her. Okay, I respect that. That's fine. I feel like if you haven't seen B. Lucille's video, um, I just want to like post that and ditto. Um, and then I have some future thoughts um, that are adding to that. The only difference is that um, I don't want to delete the video that I made a week and a half ago about Toddy. Um, I stand by what I said, but I won't be making future videos about her. That's fine. So, Toddy Westbrook had said something along the lines of, I don't care if other channels make drama videos about me, just no tarot. And here's the issue I have. There are debates within tarot that are ongoing and will never be solved. Some of those debates are, do you read um, upright cards and reverse cards or do you just read upright cards? Uh, do you so store your tarot bags in silk or cedar as is traditional or can you use a, a Ziploc sandwich bag? Um, do you need to be in person to read tarot on someone or can you do a distance? And another one of those debates is, is it okay to read tarot on another person without their consent? This is an ongoing debate. I do read tarot without someone else's consent, and I will tell you why. So as an autistic, I have difficulty with something called theory of mind. And theory of mind is the, and I just mentioned this in like two videos ago, but we'll talk about it again. Theory of mind is the ability to understand that someone else has different points of view and different access to knowledge than you do. So that something else goes on in somebody else's brain that is different than what goes on in your brain. And this isn't about psychic powers or anything like that or telepathy. This is about like if somebody comes over to your house for the first time um, and I maybe don't understand that they don't know where the glasses are. Or if um, somebody has seen a movie that I haven't seen, I don't understand that they know how the movie ends. Um, things like that. Or, or uh, what has become very common is... Uh, and. Normally other people can have theory of mind, but sometimes forget to. So in politics, um, and if anyone has different political views than I do, they are still welcome here. But sometimes I don't understand of how someone else can come to different political conclusions, that someone has different experiences, that someone has different thoughts and views and beliefs that would lead them to vote differently than I do. Um, that's hard for me to wrap my head around that, um, that someone would vote in a way that I see is is harmful and somebody else sees as you know the only way to save the world and so th these are different things that um, I sometimes struggle with and how I deal with that is by reading tarot because I have difficulty understanding the intentions of others I just learned recently that Netflix and chill does not mean go over to his house and watch net Netflix and relax um, situations like that have put me in danger because I have been confused about someone's intentions. So if I do a reading about like, what's the intentions, where are things going? 
um, it gives me a better insight into what's happening and uh, whether or not I am safe. Um, or if I have someone who I think is my friend and I hear them saying something about me that is unkind, I, um, you know, I'll, I'll do a tarot reading. Or if I think someone is my friend and I'm, I'm just paranoid that they don't really like me because sometimes I know that I can come across as, you know, not everyone's favorite cup of tea and so I I want to know like am I just being paranoid or do they really just not like me and so this is kind of these are, these are the readings that I do I have been open that I was in a DV situation and left a year and a half ago and my early tarot readings about that relationship were accurate and I was falling too much head over heels and in infatuation in early stages of love to listen to my tarot cards and if I would have listened I, I didn't think I mean how could ever how, how could this guy ever be abusive and if I would have listened to my cards my life would be very different right now so I do read tarot on other people uh, when clients ask for me to read tarot on other people I do and this is helpful to them and I, I used all of my skills so not only have I been reading tarot for a very long time I also have a degree in neuroscience, which is a BSc in psychology. I am a certified coach practitioner. So I work with an action plan for my client. And um, in instance, just last week, I, I had a client who's one of my regulars in my live streams, and it was lovely to read for her. She had some concerns about her preteen son. And so I looked at the tarot spread and things were going in a really not good way for this young man. And we were able to through the cards, work out an action plan, you know, that started with calling the pediatrician, that started with, um, uh, you know, some uh, some assessments of some other diagnoses that might be going on, because, you know, I, I was really concerned about this young man. And maybe, you know, maybe it happens that I'm wrong, maybe it happens that nothing happens, but I don't think uh, me helping this woman to work out an action plan that starts with talking to the pediatrician is is harmful. Um, there was another client I had who had concerns about their, um, their elderly parent who was living alone and starting to have some, um, issues with dementia. And so I was able to, uh, actually see a fall coming. And now, although my, uh, educational background is in psychology and neuroscience, I also worked with seniors for 20 years, uh, on and off while I was going to school and doing other things. So, um, that's kind of my, my thing is, is, you know, and my even um, graduate work, or I didn't take a master's program, but my, uh, my thesis uh, was on um, uh, memory and uh, um, communication with, uh, with, with seniors. So my area within neuroscience is specifically um, uh, geriatric neurolinguistic pathology. Uh, those are some fancy words for you. Anyways. Um, yeah, I saw fall. Um, why, why don't I work in, I'll just cover this, why don't I work in um, psychology and neuroscience? Because I love tarot, because I do what I love. Um, I may end up going back to, um, you know, I just have a bachelor and only a bachelor is, uh, is actually kind of like a bit of an insult within, um, within academia. It's, it's like having high school or kindergarten when it comes to academia. Uh, there's a Big Bang Theory segment where um, they're greeting each other, doctor, 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 and they're like, Mr. Wallowitz, I have a master's degree. Pfft, who doesn't? So there's a lot of disrespect for that. Anyway, regardless, I could go work in academia if I wanted to. I love tarot. That's why I do it. Uh, but yeah, so I saw this client's uh, parent having a fall. So we worked through um, fall prevention and ways that we can um, model the, do some mo remodeling of the house to make it safer and, and have some, um, uh, check-ins with, uh, um, a, uh, a healthcare agency and, um, you know, getting one of the, 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 uh, fallen and I can't get up buttons and reminding them to push the button. And, uh, so we went through this whole thing because like a fall for, um, a very, like an octogenarian or a nonagenarian, so like someone in their eighties or nineties or even if, into hundreds, if they're living alone and they break their hip, that can be devastating to their quality of life. So that was the focus on, yes, I'm doing a reading about somebody else and looking on, you know, how can we um, keep this, uh, this parent, this elderly parent, um, having quality of life and being able to be independent as long as they can. Um, 
that was that was what the, the purpose of the reading was. I, I don't do readings on my neighbors to find out like scandalous stuff about them. I don't care. I got my own crap going on. Um, do I do tarot readings on celebrities though? And I think that we all talk about celebrities. We're all interested in celebrities and we all speculate about celebrities. Again, being said, Toddy doesn't want me to do a tarot video on her. I won't. That's fine. Um, Toddy had said that um, tarot readers uh, spread negativity and uh, speak death over their clients and over other people. And um, I, I've i actually used the word speaking life into people as talking about what I do with tarot. So when someone says I speak death, that I'm going to take that personally because that's, that's, this is my career going on. Tati has 9 million subscribers almost and 9 million people probably heard her, I don't know how many views her videos got, have, have heard her say uh, disparaging things about my industry. And people say, well, that's just her opinion. She has allowed her opinion, but I don't think that's her opinion. I think that's her belief. And there's a difference between opinion and belief. And we have seen in the past year and a half, especially of how um, if one has a belief that is not grounded in um, in truth of how spreading that belief can cause harm. My industry already deals with a lot of um, stereotypes and a lot of fear and a lot of that fear is really, they call it religious, but it's, and I'll get into that in a moment, it's actually not religious founded, uh, but um, I'm already, you know, having to, to work, and that's why I do my Tarot Tuesdays, is so people can see this is what tarot is. Tarot can be beautiful, tarot can be helpful, tarot can be, um, like, just a, such a lovely way to, to bond and to connect, and um, if you just go watch my Tarot Tuesdays, and I'm not saying this to get clicks and views, I'll even demonetize one of them if you'd like me to, um, so you can see, like, how much beauty and love goes into my tarot readings. If Tati had an experience with a bad tarot reader, because they do exist, um, there are bad players in every industry. Um, and I certainly, like, one of the reasons that I never drink when I read tarot is because I have heard way too many stories about the drunken tarot reader. And I will never be that. I have enough respect for my clients to never do that. Um, so it does matter what Tati says, because Tati is an influencer. She has the ability to influence her subscribers and her followers and her viewers, and it is um, for her to say things that are untrue about my entire profession can have a negative effect on my business and is disparaging. I'm not going to like pursue any legal stuff or anything like that because she is entitled to her opinions and she is entitled to her beliefs. Um, I wish that she had worded things differently. Um, part of the issue that I have um, is the way that she separated tarot readers from gossip channels. And um, I'm going to get into some religious history and some religious stuff. So I have religious trauma. And I want to reiterate in saying this that I have nothing but wonderful thoughts about every pastor and church leader that I have ever had. Um, I was never individually victimized by um, a church leader. Um, so yeah, for some reason, if one of my church leaders is ever watching this, I doubt they ever would be. This isn't me making any of those kinds of accusations uh, between you. Know, Reverend Bruce or uh, Pastor Wayne and Wendy and uh, um, Lori and you know all the all the wonderful church leaders. I have nothing but love for them. Uh, one lady in particular, I would love to reconnect with. Uh, her name was Moret, and uh, I mean I could just find her on Facebook. So anyway, um, yeah, this isn't about me saying that I was individually victimized. However, I did develop um, a uh, a mental illness and anxiety disorder about. Um, the rules of religion. Uh, it, it's known as scrupulous OCD, scrupulous obsessive compulsive disorder. And I would be so terrified of breaking a biblical rule and of sinning that it started to become paranoia. And I was so afraid that I would take a candy dish from uh, a candy from a candy dish and forget to ask permission and that's stealing and am I going to now go to hell? And um, <laughs> 
uh, I became afraid to sleep because if I fell asleep, um, I could sin in my sleep and then I would go to hell because if I forgot my dream. Like, and I understand that these are not accurate. Um, and this is not a representation of Christianity. This is what I was mentally going through in my teens in regards to religion. Um, I've mentioned before, I grew up in a, um, in actually a, a very uh, progressive and moderate um, Anglican church, which uh, Americans refer to as Episcopalian. I have very fond memories of going to this beautiful building in my small town, just gorgeous stained glass windows, ornate woodwork, it was so pretty. Uh, with my grandmother, and um, yeah, I miss those days. And there, are, there's actually a part of me considering uh, starting to attend a local Anglican church uh, just to honor my grandmother. Not that I, I have any belief um, in Christianity at this point, but that's something that you know I'm not um, talking about that. Um, so I have what's uh, you know, the, the many diagnoses I have. Um, Adult reactive attachment disorder. So this is when uh, children during formative stages don't develop a bond with their caregiver. Um, this led me to be incredibly vulnerable and desperate for people to love me. And so I um, found this church where people called me sister and told me they loved me and that I was eternally in the family of Christ with them. And this appealed to me greatly. And uh, I feel that uh, I, was, I was preyed upon for that, uh, my, my vulnerability was preyed upon, uh, and I ended up joining a fundamentalist church, which is where I uh, developed the, um, the scrupulous OCD. And um, leaving the church was a good thing for me. Um, I studied the Bible back to front, up and down, and I knew my Bible and I knew the rules. And I can see how many of the rules are often contradicted and how many of the rules are ignored and how many of the rules are kind of cherry-picked by the modern church and overly focused on. And divination is one of those things. So I am actually, as triggering as it is, rereading the Bible. I'm doing a chapter a week, which yes, at this rate will take me 22 years, but it's hard to get through. Not only am I being triggered by my own um, religious trauma, but I am um, I'm reading in Genesis and Exodus, so I'm, I'm halfway through Exodus, um, about all of the times where a, a woman's consent was violated, all the times when um, a, a person was owned and forced into labor without their consent. Um, I can't use the R word and the S word on YouTube, but you get what I'm saying. Um, there's some really horrific stuff that happened in Genesis and Exodus. I can see all the times when lying was encouraged, like when um, uh, Jacob tricked um, Abraham and uh, no, yeah, Jacob tricked Abraham into blessing him when it was supposed to be Esau's blessing, and when um, you know all the all the racism towards the Canaanites. How did that happen? Because Noah's grandson found his grandpa drunk, passed out, and naked, and put a blanket on him. Noah was embarrassed and banished Canaan to different lands, and this is why the Israelites hated the Canaanites. Um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that's um, hard to listen to. So uh, I am doing this because I plan on writing a video on um, what the Bible thinks about tarot, because tarot wasn't made until the, um, the Renaissance era. Um, but um, there were other forms of divination. So um, even only um, a book and a half into the Bible, and I've already found like six or seven passages where divination is supported. Uh, for instance, um, Joseph, um, son of Jacob slash Israel, ha has a cup that he just uses for divination. It's his divination cup. Uh, so whether that's tea leaves or coffee dregs or wine dregs, um, he's doing divination and there's nothing mentioned about that being wrong. He is, you know, the favorite son and he does divination. Um, when God created uh, the, the, the sky and the stars, um, which I believe that's day three, um, I have it written down in the other room, um, he created the signs in the stars. 
why would he create the signs and the stars if we're not to read them? There is a rich history, and I will get further into that as I get further into the Bible, of um, a rich and long tradition of Jewish astrologers. Um, and what the Bible actually forbids is going to a foreign sorcerer or astrologer. So you can go to a Jewish astrologer, you just can't go to a Canaanite astrologer. Um, so there's lots of things about that. And yes, there are verses that say don't go to, don't seek a sorcerer or soothsayer. And there are, um, you know, uh, Exodus 22, 18 about murdering witches. I don't consider myself a witch, but if you're a Christian and you're not trying to kill me right now, then you're sinning and you're going to hell. Please don't kill me. Um, things like this. So it is not clear what the Bible thinks about divination, what the Bible thinks about tarot. Um, this is one of many things that the Bible is unclear of, but um, what the Bible is clear on is gossip. Um, Any time that there is a list of sins and murder is on that list, gossip is always on that list. I can think of three different times where there are similar lists to that, one of them being the Ten Commandments. So one of the now, apparently most Christians can't recite the Ten Commandments, but they always remember that thou shalt not kill. So do not kill, do not commit murder. Um, also on that list is uh, do not uh, lie, which is thou shalt not bear false witness. So bearing false witness is talking about something that you haven't seen or heard with your own eyes. So that includes lying and gossip. So the Bible is unclear about how it feels about tarot and divination and uh, astrology. The Bible is very clear how it feels about gossip. So I feel like this is something that, that um, the modern church kind of cherry picks, that um, tarot is evil, witches are evil, uh, sorcery is evil, um, but gossip, meh, you probably shouldn't. Um, so when Toddy says, Gossip channels are going to say what they want to say, but tarot channels, please don't talk about me. Um, I think that that's, sign that's uh, singling out tarot readers, and like I said, she can have whatever opinion that she wants about tarot, and I will respect that she doesn't want a reading done on her, that's okay. But I think that it is um, harmful for her to say, I, you know, I'm okay with this sin being done against me, but these people better not sin against me. Um, people talk about, like, tarot being a violation or, you know, invading her privacy and how is that different than a gossip channel speculating on her privacy? I don't think that tarot delves into spiritual matters as some people say. Um, you know, it's this, this right here, this is a Waitsmith tarot deck. I got it on Amazon. It's ink and cardstock. This is no different than this. In fact, I can give a tarot reading with these. Uh, these are just playing cards, if you see. And these are from the dollar store. Tarot is just a language. I shuffle the, the tarot, focusing on a question, and I pick the ones that feel hot, and the pictures tell a story. And I have spent um, close to two decades learning nuances of that storytelling method. That's all it is. Um, I feel that I am uh, tapping into that thing that connects us as we are all connected. And some may call this spiritual, some may, like, I'm not going to start getting into quantum physics, but because I don't have the, the, uh, the vocabulary and the knowledge to s properly give it credit. But if we are all connected, if we are all one, if we all come from the same source, and that's what I'm tapping into, what I feel when I am reading tarot for a client, now I don't necessarily have that connection if I'm reading for James Charles, but if I have a client in front of me or online and I am focusing on them, what I am focusing on is their highest self, their best potential, what they could be, how amazing that they are deep inside. And then I see the blocks that are stopping them from getting there. So that's kind of what happens when you get a tarot reading from me is I'm looking at, okay, this is, this is who the core of you is. And these are the things that are stopping you from being your highest self. And in me connecting with their highest self, that means it's my higher self talking to their higher self. This is how I interpret things. And um, it is the most, beautiful thing that I can imagine. I feel pure love when I read for a client. There is no 
spreading hate or negativity. This is this is a high. This is a natural high. And it is the closest that I have ever felt to what could be called God. Um, it is a holy and sacred experience for me. So for someone to say, um, you know, I'm speaking death over someone, you gotta know I'm gonna take that personally. Yes, it's Toddy's opinion or her belief, but um, for her to spread that uh, and further spread misconceptions, because I have people who are like, I really want a tarot reading, but I'm afraid because I was taught to be afraid as a kid. And like I, I talk about with the, the cherry picking, like in, in the book of Leviticus, um, there is a passage about uh, a man laying with another man is an abomination. Um, and there, uh, the, the original text may have actually said um, that for a man to lay with a boy, not a man, uh, is an abomination. So keep that in mind. Um, but um, tattoos are mentioned a few verses down or the next verse, like very, very close to that verse after that is about uh, forbidding tattoos. When do you see um, God hates tattoos being protested at a t tattoo parlor? When do you, I mean, you see abortion clinics being bombed and that's another issue we'll get into in another video. When do you see tattoo parlors being bombed? Both are equally sinful. And it's just, you know, why are gossip channels not being targeted by religious uh, extremists? But the tarot channels are? Um, that to me, it's, it, it, it's cherry picking and it's something that is, you know, beautiful and sacred to me that people just don't know about. It. For me, there are no angels or demons or spirits or anything else. It is me and my clients going to the root of who we are and how we are connected and how we are all connected. And for someone to say that that's, um, that that's evil or wrong, um, that's hurtful. And I do have to deal with discrimination. There was a, um, a, a networking group that I wanted to join and um, it was quite expensive to join and I had paid some towards it. Um, like I had gone to the, 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 to go to the individual meetings was, were, were $10, but then a yearly membership was $100. And I wanted to be a part of this networking group. And there was a hesitancy from the, uh, the woman who ran it. And she would, um, like I off she was asking for um, uh, donations for the, uh, for like a raffle prize. I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll donate a uh, 15 minute free reading. You know, I, I can give, I can be a part of this. And she's like, oh, we already have enough raffle gifts. We don't, we don't need yours this time. And uh, I found out that she was telling people um, that my work was of the devil. Uh, I got the other deck in this hand, so of the devil. Um, and that she was talking to a lawyer about how she could ban all tarot readers and all Reiki practitioners and all touch therapists or healing touch therapists or any intuitive from being a part of her group because it was against her religion. That's using your religion to say that I can't be a part of your club, like that's discrimination. And I face a lot of that. I face a lot of hatred and fear based on misconceptions. And Toddy perpetuated those stereotypes and perpetuated mis, uh, misconceptions. And that's what bothers me. And that's why I said, I'm upset. Please give me 12 hours to think about this. So um, that's kind of where things stand with me. So. Um, uh, also, uh, the precedent um, about, because I talked about, like, I do readings on other people um, without their consent, but I'm not out to do, to be malice. And if I do a reading on a celebrity and there are other gossip channels who are covering it as well, I don't see the difference. Um, whether someone's speculating of, you know what I think is going to happen. I think that this two and this two, they're going to get married and blah, blah, blah. How is that different than me looking at cards and saying, well, this card I think represents this person, this card represents this person, this card represents marriage, okay, so I see that these people are getting married. How is that different? I don't think it is. If, if we're talking about public figures, if we're talking about celebrities, I have a reading planned because I have a content calendar that's kind of loose based on who's trending and... Um, in, so I want to do my um, celebrity tarot reading starting like on Wednesdays. I have a reading coming out um, in two Wednesdays. What date is that? Did I write the date on that? No, I didn't write the date on that. Um, I am just as much into my stickies. I was actually really happy to see that B. Lucille's into stickies too. So I got a sticky up on my window. Jana Duggar, I want to do a tarot reading on, on the first Thursday in, um, 
in July. And yes, that is Josh Duggar's uh, court date. Um, and yes, so people are going to be, it's trending. I want to do the reading anyway, so I've lined up the time with that. I'm willing to bet that Jana Duggar has similar views on tarot to what Toddy has. Does that mean that I am forbidden to do a tarot reading on Jana Duggar? I also want to do a tarot reading on the um, uh, relationship between uh, Justin and Haley Bieber. Does that, and I know that um, uh, Justin is deeply involved with uh, the Hillsong Church and is, is quite religious and has released a gospel. I'm not a big Bieber fan, um, but you know I'm aware that he released a gospel album. So this is an important part of his life. Um, does that mean that because he is Christian that I am banned from giving a tarot reading on him? I don't know the um, religious leanings of every celebrity out there, nor is it my business to go find out. Should I keep a list of who I can and can't do tarot readings on? Um, I'm, I don't think so. I think that we're talking about public figures and I think that, um, you know, if I, my readings, like if, if you watch my reading on uh, Toddy, it comes from a place of love. It doesn't come from me spreading hate. So I stand by what I've said and done. I have removed all of my Without a Crystal Ball videos from my channel just because my channel was just becoming a gross Without a Crystal Ball channel and, and that's not what I wanted. I, I want my channel to be about the things I love, which is tarot, which is magic, um, and which is, you know, commentary about stuff that I love and that I'm passionate about. And so I took down that stuff. But I see nothing wrong with the way that I read Tarot for Toddy. I did so with integrity. And if you recall, like the things that I, I predicted were, um, uh, you know, her um, returning to what is, so that she would return to YouTube, um, but that it wouldn't be in the same capacity that it was before because she was done with the drama. Um, I, I think I saw some maturity of her moving on from a lot of that drama because she had been through a lot and um, social media did become very toxic. I saw her um, uh, really getting down to what matters in her life and what she's leaving behind and what she what what is essential to who she is. Um, and I talked about her returning to her childhood religion. So everything I said was true. Nothing was said in malice. Nothing, nothing was said in hate. So even though I respect her, um, you know, wanting no further videos, I agree with that. I will respect that. I won't take down videos where I was doing nothing wrong. Um, she hadn't mentioned anything about that, about that before that. Um, and I don't feel being pressured to censor myself um, and the past works that I've done um, when I have done nothing wrong there is, is appropriate. So um, past videos are going to stay up, um, but I will respect Toddy's wishes. I just wish that she had um, been a bit more respectful to my profession. Um, yes, she is entitled to her beliefs. Yes, she is entitled to her opinions. But if she's asking for respect, um, as B. Lucille said, it's a two-way street, and I, I think that she did do some damage and some harm to my industry, um, and it could have been dealt with um, with a little more respect towards what I do. Um, she didn't need to say that um, we're speaking death over people or violating people or... Um, spreading negativity. I think that was that was uncalled for. She could have just asked, um, hey, no tarot, because I'm going through some personal stuff. And also, is this forever? And am I just barred from, you know, like I might do a reading on Jeffree Star or Shane Dawson and Toddy comes up. Am I now banned from just saying her name if she came up in a tarot reading and I wasn't expecting that? Um, and what if her views changed? So she said that she used to be very much into tarot and now she's not. And she's allowed to change her mind. I certainly changed my mind. And I, I respect anyone who's thinking deeply about things and making different decisions. That doesn't make them a hypocrite. It makes them possible of growth. If she decides later on in five, ten years that she has a different opinion on tarot, um, I doubt that she's going to make a retraction and I doubt that she's going to say, yeah, okay, you know, fair game on me on the Zero channels. Um, so I just, I don't like the way it was handled. Um, I will respect her wishes. Um, I just wish that she uh, gave me the same respect, which I don't feel that she did. And I'm entitled to those feelings. So that is how I feel about Taro and Toddy Westbrook. Uh, too long, didn't read. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not going to be a dick and make a tarot reading about her when she's asked. I don't think it is appropriate for a influencer to dictate my content. I think that a lot of uh, misconceptions um, and falsehoods were spread about an industry which I already feel um, like I am I have my back against the wall defending and I feel that it could have been handled with more respect towards my industry. That is my opinion and the too long didn't read that I um, wanted to say last night but really needed to form my words around. Everyone, have a great day. Um, I do have a live stream coming up tonight that is entitled, Is Tarot Scary? And I am welcoming anyone who has any concerns, any fears about tarot to come hang out with me. Um, usually I do uh, just a one hour live stream. Um, I may do two hours because I didn't do uh, my Tarot Tuesday. Uh, I had errands to run and then Thursday I had uh, some um, uh, issues. <laughs> Um, everything was fine, just, just yeah, um, I'm finding um, since my gallbladder surgery that there is one side effect of if I eat fatty foods one day, of how my body reacts to it the next day, and uh, nature called, and nature kept calling for 15 minutes while I was in live stream running and I'm in the washroom. Anyway, TMI, I'm sorry, um, but yeah, so I might do two hours and do like my tarot Tuesday, tarot Friday live stream tonight and then um, do uh, a second one. I'll probably split them up into talking about is tarot scary because it's really not. It has the power to be beautiful. And if you have any concerns or questions, I do encourage you to um, to check out other videos that I've done about tarot, to check out my Tarot Tuesdays and what it's like to get a reading from me live and to bring any questions that you have about tarot to my live stream tonight. Uh, if you would like to book a private reading, I should have said this at the beginning, um, you can do so at the link below, www.carolineironwell.com. If you found value from this video and you would like to support this channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee or buying Merlin a T-R-E-A-T. -E he is my puppy, if you're not familiar with this channel, and he's off sleeping on the couch. What a sweet boy, but if I say the word, he'll be right here. If you'd like to buy him a T-R-E-A-T -E or buy me a coffee, you can do so at the link below as well. Um, if no one has told you today, I love you, I care about you, I am thankful for you, and I am glad you're here. Bye, pumpkins.